Hey guys, Doug Shadwell, Survival Archery Systems. It's been a while since I've made a video and I wanted to speak a little bit about the Atmos Compact Modern Longbow that we launched uh, last year in May that started shipping in October of last year as well, uh, 2018. Um, we've had a number of reviews that have been done by guys like David from Ultimate Survival Tips, um, Chris Tanner from Prepared Mind 101, uh, a couple of other YouTube channels have also done some reviews. All really, really good reviews and we've been getting some fantastic feedback from all the customers who have purchased. Uh, what I have noticed though is there's a, a number of comments that come through on the videos for people who have not yet purchased uh, who would like to but also from people who are, I guess you can call it, um, I wouldn't say haters of the bow, but I would say people who had um, some negative comments. So I just wanted to address that and just um, clear up some, um, some concepts around why we designed the bow in the way we did, um, regarding the price that we are charging for the bow and just a couple of other aspects. Um, so let me just run through, first of all, why we designed the bow is, um, the folding bows that we've had going since 2014, uh, we've sold a lot, a lot of those bows. Uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback on that. Um, touch wood, to, to date, we haven't actually had one um, warranty return on that, so that's really, really good. And um, there were a couple of questions that came through about two years ago before we started developing the Atmos, and that was around can you can you put sights on the folders you know can you add a bow fishing mount all that type of stuff and we did look at that from a structural point of view and there was just no ways that we could have made the bow strong enough um, so that it would last a lifetime and also add those kind of features um, a shelf you know an arrow shelf was another one and that's why you'll see on the folding bows we have uh, no shelf uh, there's a little bit of arches paradox it's something that you deal with pretty quickly when you when you're practicing but from a structural point of view, there was just no way that we could integrate those things in, a, in a, a way that would make the bow durable. So I decided that I was then going to move survival archery systems in a slightly different direction and start getting into more regular bows. And the first of, of those bows was um, what I call a compact modern longbow, uh, which then became the Atmos. So the Atmos is not a survival bow. Um, it was never intended to be a survival bow, but it was intended to be a hunting bow that you could pack down really small and fit inside um, pretty much most day packs. I haven't come across a day pack yet that the Atmos doesn't fit into, um, but I can fairly comfortably say that for a 60 inch bow, uh, besides the SAS tactical bow, the Atmos will fit into more backpacks than any other bow on the market at the moment. Um, I'm willing to be challenged on that, so if you can find something that is 60 inches or bigger and it fits down or packs down smaller, please send me a note, send me an email, and I will gladly um, retract my comment. But yeah, um, in terms of the riser, um, just a little bit of an explanation. There's a lot of people ask me, but why would you design something that's so expensive? Um, really good reason for that. So I went and looked at all of the sort of takedown longbows on the market. I looked at ones that had cast risers. I looked at ones that had um, billet machine risers. I looked at the forged risers and I saw a very clear distinction between the two. And the main one was in terms of the, um, and I must be careful how I say this because um, I want to be accurate in terms of engineering, but there was sort of a high end price and that was where your billet machined and your forged risers sit and then there was the lower end of price sort of more your entry level bows and that's where your cast risers sit and I went and um, did a sort of an evaluation on what is the difference in engineering terms when it comes to weight, strength, durability and stiffness at the end of the day and that was a com combination of factors that I wanted to design into, into the Atmos was that I wanted it to be light, I wanted it to be stiff, um, a stiffer bow, if you speak to the target archers, um, means it's a slightly more accurate bow because you don't have um, torsion of the riser when you, when you stress it and then when you, when you release the string that torsion sort of kicks back. 
And the reason for that is if you look at this section here, you're not just bending in the backwards and forward plane, but you can get a bit of a twist um, through this section over here um, and this section over here. So a stiffer riser will um, deflect less when you when you draw it back. That means when the arrow is shot, it's going to go straight. So it's slightly more accurate. And then in terms of your um, durability and strength, um, I wanted something that was um, going to last a lifetime. Um, and that was why you'll see in your in your owner's manual, which I'll talk about a little bit later, right at the end, we talk about a warranty. And I'm just going to read this section here. When you purchase an Atmos Compact Modern Longbow, you get the assurance that your bow has been carefully crafted and is guaranteed to be free of defects in material and workmanship. Your Atmos bow is warranted against defects in material and workmanship to the original registered owner when purchased either directly from Survival Archery Systems or a registered dealer for the life of the original owner. The warranty applies only to the original owner and is not transferable. This warranty applies to the riser and the limbs. Okay, so there you can see we've made a very bold um, statement in doing that and for very good reason is because we decided to go with a bullet machined riser. Now let me explain the difference. A cast riser means that you, you have a molding um, you melt the, uh, the aluminum or aluminium um, in non-US countries, you would call it. And then that hot aluminium is then poured into the, into the casting and it eventually solidifies and then you have a, a solid riser. Now, the issue in the cast risers is that depending on the flow of that aluminum into the mold and the turbulence and the shape, how that mold um, or how that riser then cools once it comes out of the mold, there is the chance that if, um, well, there's the chance that you can get a little pockets of air inside there, and that the structure cannot doesn't solidify exactly how you want it to, um, and it can change from riser to riser, it can change from batch to batch. It can um, there's a, there's a number of factors that that made us it was uncomfortable enough for us to say that if we want to know that it's going to stay strong and it's going to be perfect and it's going to, not going to have little air inclusions and, and weak pockets, we wanted to stay away from that. Um, the reason why cast risers are so prolific on the market is because they can be ma manufactured really cheaply because really there's once you've invested in your, on your, in your casting or your molding, um, then you're really just paying for your material and process flows. Um, when it comes to a bullet machined riser, and what I mean by bullet machine, that means you take a, a solid block of aluminium, <clears throat> and we start off with 12 pounds of aluminium, and it then gets machined um, normally in a, a four or even a five axis CNC machine. It gets machined down um, to what we have here, which if you take the total bow weight of 2.6 pounds, we're probably sitting at about just under, yeah, I'd say at about... 1.6 1.7 pounds for the riser so we machine over 10 pounds of aluminum away um, there are ways um, to reduce the wastage and we're going to be doing that soon by getting an, an extrusion first and then go into that but um, extremely expensive because you've got a lot of time on the cnc machine and um, that's why our risers um, or our bows actually cost a lot more than the cast risers so you can't compare them but what you're getting at the end of the day is an extremely strong and, ex and extremely light but, and a very, very durable and dependable um, bow that's not going to let you down in the field. The third type of riser that you get is called a forged riser. And basically a forging is when you have a, a big press with uh, special shapes that are the same, more or less the same shape as what your riser is going to look like at the end of the day, uh, short of couple of machinings that you'll do after you forge it but basically it's big press and you put a piece of uh, very hot um, material in there not so hot that it's molten but um, it's kind of in a in a gooey state and then you you press that with an extreme amount of force and it kind of presses that molten material into the shape of your um, of your press or your, your mold I guess at the end of the day and then you take that um, piece of material and you put that on your, your CNC machine and then you machine um, what needs to be machined at the end of the day. So in, in terms of your, 
your high, high-end risers, um, that's going to be your billet machined and it's going to be your forged. And depending on how companies want to invest um, and bring down costs at the end of the day versus the quantities, they may decide to go for a billet machined or they may decide to go and do the initial investment and rather do a, a forged um, riser at the end of the day. Um, when we looked at um, what we were going to do, we decided to go for a CNC billet machine because we were able to control um, the process um, exactly so long as we were getting um, assurance from our material supplier that the um, material was homogenous and good in terms of the um, specifications that we had set, them set for them for the material. Uh, we decided to go that way. Um, what we have seen is that our riser came out exactly as designed. It's light, it's stiff, it's durable, um, very, very dependable. Um, yeah, when we, when we did look at the different grades of risers on the market, and we saw that you know the entry level risers were were your cost risers, the um, the higher end ones were your cost and your sorry not your cost your bullet machined and your forged. Those risers actually fell into the category from um, you know anything from eight hundred dollars all the way up. I mean, there's some of the some of the bows that go well over a thousand dollars depending on the limb set that you put on that. Um, and, and yeah, there's some really high-end uh, wooden bows, um, sort of custom-made wooden bows that go, I've seen some of them um, go into the $1,500, $1,600 range. Um, and yeah, you get, get more expensive ones. That, that's really, really good high-end custom stuff. So so you do, it's your um, bullet machined, your cost, and you get your, your, your custom wooden-made ones that sit, you know, $800 upwards. And then you get your entry level bows that sort of sit here from um, you know, anything from $150 to $200. Um, there's nothing wrong with those bows. It's just that they, they're made with um, sort of cheaper, cheaper materials, uh, different manufacturing processes. But what we wanted was we wanted to get into your, um, the more high end um, range, but we felt that we, we couldn't sell um, our bows for 800 because the market would be a bit smaller. So we wanted to kind of come in the mid range of where, where bows sit. And that is in about the, you know, 450 to $600 range, um, which is pretty much exactly where the Atmos comes in. Now, we know that not everyone can afford that. And trust me, I wish we could have designed a compact modern longbow that, that everyone could afford and that we could, you know, just sell sell to everyone but um, the compromises that we would have had to make in terms of your strength and your durability and, and your weight it just it just didn't make sense there was no sort of in engineering terms there was no um, there was no solution that we could get all of those things you know packaged in such a small package and still make it safe and um, and dependable and, and durable so we went for what we think is a really good compromise in terms of price versus um, versus technology and um, yeah the Atmos, the Atmos bow sits where it sits price wise um, if that's something that you, you want something that can fit in your backpack um, that is light but is also extremely durable then um, the Atmos is definitely for you and that's why we designed it now a lot of you out there might be saying yeah, but you could have got the costing right. There's a lot of stuff that you could have do to brought the price down. Um, it, it really is not that easy. And the compromises we would have had to make to do a cost riser in such a compact form um, really just it, it didn't allow for it. And one of the things, I'll show you one example, and there's many, many of them. Um, if you look at the length um, that the limb fits into the riser, so it's from there to there. That is only about two inches of overhang. Okay. If you look at a normal bow, and I've got a, I've got a bow from Ragham here. Um, the overhang on the riser from there to there is almost four inches. And what you've got is when you've got when you've got your 
your screw holding that limb down um, and you're trying to cantilever that when, you, when you're flexing the bow, there's a certain force in there. And the force in the bolt um, is relative to the length of the limb and the length from the pivot point, the end of the riser, to where that bolt is. So if you look at the difference between the Atmos, right, and the uh, a normal bow, a normal recurve or long bow, um, that fulcrum is way reduced, which means that the force in the bolt goes goes up a number of times. Um, if we had used cast aluminum there, um, there was a very high risk that that structure, which look how small that is, um, would have then just ripped out. Okay, so little things like that, it just made us impossible for us to um, to go with a, a casting. So, uh, as I said, to manufacture um, bullet machined and forged is extremely expensive. Right, so from our original <clears throat> launch, there are a couple of changes that we've made to the Atmos. Um, and I think I should actually just go through what you get. So, when you get your bow, you're going to get your, your riser. It's uh, bullet machined from a, a solid block of aerospace grade aluminum. Okay, we then take that through and we have it uh, Cerakoted. So we've got the Cerakote burnt bronze and we also have the Cerakote uh, cobalt, which is kind of like an anthracite or blackish one. And that has a slightly, slightly metallic uh, tinge to that. As you know, um, Cerakote is one of the uh, most durable uh, paints on the planet and is extensively used in firearms. Um, very, very nice paint, nice to look at. It's got a nice feel to it, uh, extremely durable, scratch resistant, so it's gonna last a long, long time. Uh, what we then do is we have the um, inserts for the um, limb screws, and these are special military grade um, steel inserts that we put into that. So you're not bolting directly into the aluminum, as we've heard a few comments on. There's actually a military grade, extremely, extremely high strength um, steel in there. Okay, we put one of those in each end. We then install a chemically blackened 316 stainless steel, which is a marine grade stainless steel. Uh, we put that in there where your, your uh, bowfish mount or your stabilizer goes. The grips, uh, we've actually got replaceable grips, so at the time of making this video, I still haven't updated the photos on our website, which I will do shortly. But the grips are now made of a G10, and a G10 is a, a composite material, and the, a lot of the firearms, a lot of the pistols uh, use that for the scales on their grips. It's a very, very stable product, very durable, very long-lasting, so we've got that on, on either side. And then the retaining screws, which hold that together, are again a chemically blackened 316 stainless steel. Um, the limbs that you get are the same limbs that we have on our folding bows. It is a protruded composite fiber. Okay, basically uh, the same material that you get on uh, most of your high-end compound bows. So that's how we're able to take um, modern material that has an extremely deep flex. And if you look at what that means in terms of stacking, uh, stacking is when your bow's limbs almost become parallel, that your, your force goes up exponentially when you get to the, um, the higher draw lengths. Our bows don't stack all the way to 31 inches, so you're getting a very, very smooth draw. Um, so yeah, that's your, that's your limbs. And then what you also get with it is you get a little bag with your Allen key. And I'll talk more about the Allen key now. And you get your limb washer. Again, chemically blackened 316 stainless steel. Hold on, got something wrong with my camera. All right, got a little note in my camera. 31, chemically blackened 316 stainless steel, as well as a high tension, um, high tension steel limb retaining bolt. Um, that's pretty standard across the industry. Uh, you also get um, some integrated string alignment slash logo caps. These are injection molded. You'll see this is also 
very different to what uh, what we we have on the other side and what those do is those pop into the back here okay so you're going to get one of those on on either side of your riser and you can use those two points then to align your string for center shot okay so those those are a upgraded feature on our bows and you use the little arrows on the logos to align your string up uh, perfectly for for center shot okay um the other thing i wanted to talk about was we get a lot of questions about the the bolts that come with the bow um guys wanting um thumb screws and a lot of guys saying well why would i want to buy something that's got an, uh, a hex key or an allen key because it's just going to get lost um all I can say there is we've we've done this for good reason. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not a survival bow. This is a compact hunting bow. Okay. Um, remember I talked earlier about your your overhang with your limbs and that the force in the bolt is a lot higher. Um, if you have a standard thumb screw, the steel that they use on that is um, a lot weaker than this high tension steel that we use. It also has a different thread count. So in order to make sure that our customers remain safe, uh, we specifically didn't go for a thumb screw because um, there's the possibility that someone goes out to the hardware store, buys a thumb screw, sticks it in, and injures themselves, okay? So that was one reason. The other reason was, if you look at the fulcrum point, um, in order to get your composite material um, working really safely, um, and to prevent it from cracking, you need to torque it down sufficiently. Now, not a lot in this case, but more than what you can do with a small diameter thumb turn. Um, so that's why we specifically made it an Allen key to get a little bit more of a torque and a little bit more of a seating of the washer onto the surface um, with that driving torque. Okay. So that's why we didn't do a thumb screw. If this was a survival boat, we would have probably figured out a way to do the thumb screw. Uh, but for those two reasons, um, that's why. That's why we didn't. Okay. Um, let's talk about what else you get. You also get a string in the package. Okay. And when you get it, just take note that you've got a little little knock set inside of the bag there as well. So when you first pull it out, don't don't lose that. Um, and then it doesn't come with an arrow rest. Uh, there's probably hundreds of different types of arrow rests that you can choose for your bow. So we didn't want to prescribe and, and give one. It just added more cost to the package. Um, there's plunger buttons, there's whisker bursts, there's all sorts of things that you can buy that you may prefer to. So we just left it out and um, we said if you want to buy that from us, uh, the ones that we have, which is the bare weather rest, uh, you can just add that to your cart as well. Um, in terms of accessories, something which I talked about earlier that the folding bows can't do. We wanted you to be able to have the option of putting bow fishing mounts on, uh, stabilizers. If you want to use a plunger button or a whisker biscuit, you can add it on um, using this large diameter threaded hole here. Uh, sights, you can add sights on here. Um, you can also use this to mount um, riser mounted quivers as well. Uh, so pretty much anything short of a clicker, and a clicker is more used in field archery, you can add to your bow, which is um, it lets you pump it out as you want that. Okay, um, so that's a really, really, really big sort of game changer compared to our folding bows. And let's uh, let you get um, you know your rig set up however you want it. The other thing which I think is important to note is that we we got a lot of compound bow users who said that they would like something for their backpack. Uh, so we specifically designed this this riser to kind of be a hybrid between a recurve or, or longbow riser um, and a compound bow riser, more in terms of the the way that the the grip um, sort of integrates into the hand. Um, and more you're going to have an open grip. Okay, so a lot of the compound bow archers will have more of an open, looser grip. Okay, and that's. If you want to describe it as torqueless, as a lot of the guys do, it's a torqueless grip. It has a 17 degree angle, uh, which is very, very popular on uh, most of the of the compound bows around. Um, but if you're a recurve, a recurve shooter, it's not going to be a big adaption to move across to um, the torqueless grip. 
So it should, familiar, it should feel familiar to compound bow arches as well as your recurve and longbow arches as well. Uh, manual it comes with, it's pretty detailed, uh, goes through some safety items. Uh, just remember always wear ballistic uh, rated glasses um, when you're shooting a bow, any bow. Um, you've only got two eyes, so you may as well protect them. And um, it goes through all the different components. Uh, it goes, talks a little, about, a little bit about assembly and initial setup and so forth and so forth. Um, very important, if you are buying takedown arrows from us or takedown arrows from anywhere else, make sure that your your arrow spine is rated to the poundage of your bow. Um, being a takedown arrow, there is the potential for it to break in half. Um, of course, our arrows are properly engineered that that is not going to happen. So long as you stick to the, um, the proper poundage and the spine of the arrows, that those are matched. Um, but there are some takedown arrows on the market which may be sort of less well designed. So just a, um, a note of caution uh, on that. Right, in terms of assembly, um, I'm actually going to assemble, this is my bow, it was my birthday last Sunday, and because we've been trying to <laughs> catch up on production, um, I haven't actually got one of these bows for myself, so I decided it was finally time on my birthday, and I got myself one of the, the cobalt ones. Uh, this is a 50 pound, I'm going to hopefully be doing some hunting in Australia this year for um, some sandbar or for some red deer. Um, they get really, really big up that side. Um, so yeah, assembly is really simple. You make sure that the, um, the limb groove is facing upwards. You've got your limb pockets on your riser also facing upwards. You're going to place your limb in the groove. You're going to put your washer on top and you are going to screw that in there by hand and nip that up and don't give it a good old cranking um, all you need is just a light you know just nip it up so that it's um, tight-ish but don't go and over crank it otherwise you are probably going to um, crack the material or not get the the screw back out there so it's as simple as that so again check that the string groove is facing upwards washer in limb retaining bolt in give it a bit of a nip up and there you go Right, these I never showed you earlier, but these actually get uh, super glued in. So it comes with a little, little super glue pouch. Um, there's a little plastic piece in there that pops open the seal. And then there's a second little part of the screw cap that comes off. Now all you're gonna do is just put a couple of spots of glue around you don't want to put too much otherwise that's going to squeeze out just a couple little little dots and you'll see there's a little little nipple that protrudes out you're going to put that into one of the holes you're going to pop that in there press that down lightly so that the glue sets in uh, line that up so that it's sort of equidistant with the hole around it and then you're going to let that dry when you come around to the other side, you're going to do the same. Just a couple of dots on there. Pop that in there, press it down. Now what you do want to do is make sure that if any glue does pop out, that you get that off as quickly as possible. Replace your cap on your glue, set that aside. And there you've got, um, look how nice that looks. And those are your string alignment logos that you use to get your center shot done. What you're going to do now is, I'm going to 
take your string out. Now again, be careful that you don't lose the little knock set. That's your little knock set that you're going to use to um, align your arrow properly when you set that up. We're going to put the string on the one side. Okay. And I'm going to stand up quickly to do this. This is called the step through method. Right, what you're going to do is you're going to put the limb on the outside of your left foot. You're going to step between the string and the riser. Make sure that the riser's the right way around. You've got the um, the bow bending the right way. Okay, you're going to just bend that over and you're going to seat it into the other, other, other limb. Make sure that both sides are seated before you release that. And there you have it, your bow is strung up. Um, let it stretch out overnight and then you want to get your, your brace height correct. So let it stretch out overnight first. Uh, the next day, come back. You're going to wind your string or twist your string until your brace height is correct. Um, you want it at about seven and a half, eight, even eight and a half inches. You've got a tuning process. There's something you're going to have to learn how to do. We give a very basic description in, um, in the user manual. But um, yeah, tuning is something you're going to have to learn. So um, go and have a look at Google and and YouTube and uh, get some tips on how to do that. You're also then going to um, assemble your knock point as per your tuning process and that's going to put your arrow in a consistent position when you shoot. What I wanted to do and why I strung the string is balance of a bow is extremely important and it helps with your accuracy. So when guys talk about a balanced bow, um, you don't want something that's top heavy and you don't want something that's Bottom heavy, if it's top heavy when you're hunting out of a blind, what's going to happen is your, your bow is going to want to fall forward um, a lot easier. Um, you're going to have natural torque on your hand from, from the weight of the top of the bow. At the same time, if it's bottom heavy, you're going to have the bow wanting to um, kick out. If it's perfectly balanced, you've got... Now I'm going to show you what, what this is doing. This is going to go slightly backwards, ever so slightly. When you're in a hunting blind position, well, I'm going to let go of this bow, look at that. It's just balancing perfectly. Okay, so when you're in when you're in a when you're in a um, in a tree stand without a sight on it, without a stabilizer, the bow is going to be very, very well balanced. Okay, and look at that, I'm not actually grabbing that with my thumb. My thumb is open okay when you've got it in in a horizontal position you're going to see that the bow is going to be slightly backwards what you're going to do there is you're going to put a stabilizer on it i'm going to fetch that quickly all right so when you're on let's say you're Stalking, walk and stalk, you're sitting in a ground blind, you're doing some target shooting. Your stabilizer and your um, sights are more or less the same weight. So what that means is when you're in a horizontal shooting position, your bow is going to sit almost perfectly, perfectly balanced. Okay, when you're now in a blind as well, You've also got that angle. Um, the weight distribution on the riser and the bow is also going to give you a really, really well balanced bow there again. Again, my fingers are open and the bow is just sitting there. Okay, that means when you're going to shoot the, shoot the bow, you're going to release the string. It's just going to sit there. Okay. It's just going to sit. Horizontal position balanced it's just going to sit okay um, again if you take that off or if you take your sights off if you had the sight you want to shoot off the shelf 
nothing on there you'll see that the weight again it's not for flat shooting it's it's balanced but it's slightly slightly sitting back but as soon as you go into your into your tree stand it's perfectly balanced so that's that's the way we had to do it that's how we balance the bow um, I think you're gonna really really like it right in terms of the size of the bow and the compactness of the bow there's uh, we get a lot of comments from guys who've never actually had the bow in their hands saying oh but you get this bow and this bow and they pack down just a small um, not actually when you look at what is available in the market and bear in mind we're looking at a 60 inch bow now 60 inch bow is where we felt um, the taller archers and we're talking guys who draw 30 inch 31 inches um, we wanted to include them into into the fold and not just make bows that are you know there for the guys who draw 27 28 29 inches uh, we felt that 60 inch was the the minimum length of bow that you needed so that your bow didn't stack okay so if you talk about 60 inch plus bows um, there is really not a lot going on in terms of the recurve world um, so I've got a, a recurve limb here okay this is pretty much a standard recurve limb uh, this is a bow that I've had for a while but if you look in terms of how compact the limb is um, there's the difference it's um, you can see the recurve limb takes up a lot more space um, than the straight limb does so the straight limb you can shove down on the side of your pack the recurve really you know you've, if you if you're packing other other things in there like potentially a sleeping bag or tops or you've got um, you know water bladders and that it kind of it's just an, an odd shape it's it just gets in there um, if you look at your your package now let's put let's put our riser down on our limb and we take um, a standard recurve riser and limb that's kind of what you get in there so a lot bigger a lot more space um, it's just not that compact the recurve limbs are longer than than the um, the longbow limbs the straight limbs that we have um, so yeah it just I, I get I get that you know that you've got a lot more affordable recurve bows that can do a great job in terms of actually hunting but when it comes to compactness and durability um, that's where the Atmos really really starts to shine um, and we believe that we've got that that nice balance between compactness um, weight price for the high-end bows you're getting all that quality and, and craftsmanship and materials that the high-end bows have but we've just done it for a little bit um, a little bit cheaper why are we come in cheaper we can make that claim um, to be absolutely honest with you is at the moment we don't um, we don't retail bows in the USA um, we we manufacture in the USA and that's extremely important for us is that the bows come with that sort of that manufacturing name made in the USA uh, we we love the local industry survival archery systems is based in Lexington Kentucky um, our people are amazing there and we just wanted to keep we wanted to keep our manufacturing in the USA because um, you know that's that's kind of home and um, and we want to support we want to we, we don't want to outsource things we had that opportunity when when I started the company I could have outsourced to um, to other countries and I just wanted to I wanted to keep it here in the USA um, and that's something which we're never going to change can we make the bows cheaper I, out there in, in other countries absolutely uh, can we make more profit absolutely do I want to do that no not at the compromise of you know fellow countrymen um, at, the, at the compromise of the economy um, that's just that's just a decision I made I'm a call me a patriot at heart yeah, I've got an accent I was born in South Africa but um, where I build my companies and where I make my homes and you know the countries I live in um, I become a patriot of that country um, I love my people from that country so we kept this in the USA um, and we hope that that holds a lot of weight with our customers um, no matter where you are in the world so um, yeah in terms of made in the USA this this just fits right into to sort of that category of, of pricing and um, I think we've we've done pretty well on that 
and um, um, yeah, that's that's where it sits. That what it, that's what it is. If that means that's for you, if it means you can afford it, you've got some extra income. Um, have a look at it. Go and have a look at the other reviews from um, David from Ultimate Survival Tips, from uh, Chris Tanner from Prepared Man 101. I'll speak a little bit more about that later on as well. But um, go and have a look at their reviews and make up your mind. Um, if you'd like the one, go ahead and take a look at www.survivalarcherysystems.com. Uh, you can pick them up there. I think at the time of making this video, they were still on special. And we'd also included in that uh, that deal a couple of takedown errors with $60. Go ahead and get yourself one uh, if you like. Otherwise, take a look at some of the review videos from David at Ultimate Survival Tips and also Chris Tanner at Prepared Mind 101. Both fantastic channels, a lot of integrity, and I specifically chose to send uh, bows to them because I know that their channels carry a lot of credibility. And if a product does end up on their channel, it means that um, they've put a lot of thought into you know whether it deserves to be there. They don't put stuff on their channel um, unless they like it and unless they think that the, their viewers are going to be able to purchase something that um, that, that is worth it. So um, there's a lot of a lot of channels that basically get uh, paid to review, and we stay away from that because at the end of the day, if you're going to spend this kind of money. I want um, you guys to be getting something that you're happy with. So uh, yeah, that's how that all works. Um, take all different reviews online with a pinch of salt. Uh, there's a lot of guys who are reviewing things just to get affiliate fees. But at the end of the day, look for channels that are credible. Um, take a look at your products. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can make an informed decision on whether the Atmos is the bow for you. Otherwise, we've got folding bows, we've got a number of other products and um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Cheers.